Okay, well, you know, I st I click the the start button. Whoa. <laughs> And now, Hi Fabio, how are you? <laughs> no, you don't have to start now. Don't worry. It's a, don't pretend. <laughs> We've been talking for like half an hour. <laughs> yeah. First now, soulmates. Give it a little bit of time. Let people, you know, join in. Because mm -hmm. it be takes about <laughs> it takes about thirty seconds for people to get the notification, mm -hmm. and then about another thirty seconds for people to log in. Mm -hmm. But I'm keeping the chat on the on the side, so I'm looking at everything happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, that looks good. And I think that now the stream has officially started in terms of like you know people are watching it, but it's okay. This is a little are people little are people really watching. Yeah, there are comments wow. coming in. <laughs> I don't want to tell you whose comment is coming in. <laughs> uh -oh. This can be good. You can, you can, you can just you know go to the YouTube uh, page and and see it for yourself. Uh. Yeah, we got people watching. We got people watching. Give it another couple of minutes because you know they they'll be joining in. So let's do. I, I'll tell you what. Since I have some notes of things that I want to ask you mm -hmm. and things that I have to do, I have a, I have a to-do list. It's literally a to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> these, are, are, these are the presents that my wife uh, gives me. And I'm going to talk nice to you. <laughs> yeah, because I'm totally unorganized. And even though I have lists and, uh, and, uh, and a calendar and everything, I still forget stuff. Like, you know, in, uh, in, uh, <laughs> to be honest, after this talk, I need to go to a party and she yeah. booked this party like three weeks ago. And I was like, but I have a live show. And she was like, you're an idiot. Okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> I deserve that. Sorry for keeping you. No, actually it's <laughs> my honor, man, because you know, we've been, uh, so to say chatting online for so long and I really wanted <laughs> this to happen. Um, Anyway, what I wanted to tell you is that I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to ask you some questions, you know, because there are a couple of things that I'm interested in, but mm -hmm. I'm also going to be looking on on my pad and I'm going to write notes so, you know, that I don't lose my, so don't think that, uh, that I'm not uh, caring about you. By the way, we have already online a guy that um, I don't know his name is Ta -ta -tam -tama -tama Thomas. Then we have Mike Dugenio, Aldo Lanzi, Lucas too is going to get himself some coffee. I've already heard this name, Thomas. Have you? Have you? Or is Never it Tamash? Heard of him. <clears throat> Tamash. Never heard of him. Anyway, he, he wrote a message. Shit. It's uh, the shit icon. It's the shit emoji. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Tommy. Thanks. Hey, Tommy. You are next, Tommy. Now I'm trying to get, you know, uh, Trond to do a proper lecture about your company because, okay, you know, we're a couple of minutes his in. His company. <laughs> his company. Yeah. Uh, we are a couple of minutes in, so, you know, we can start mm -hmm. talking a little bit because, uh, you know, you work <clears> at uh, Mir. Mir mm -hmm. is a small office based in Norway, which probably people are already aware of. Do, pe do yeah. you guys, hey guys, <laughs> do you guys know Mir? Yeah. I'm trying to get the owner of the company to, to come and talk to me, but he's very busy. Yeah, but actually I remember a couple of years ago, I was at the D2 and he gave a lecture about Mir. That was, uh, that was did, pretty epic. Did you, did you come at the D2? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. we talk? Was, uh, no, of course not. Come on, man. Why are you doing this? No, no, I'm not so interesting. Oh, there is a uh, Javier <laughs> from Buenos Aires. He says hi from Buenos Aires. That's so cool. Hola, hola, que tal? Nice, nice. <laughs> Your Spanish is much better than my Italian. <laughs> Hold on, I have to show you something. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, uh, 
This is an Very original. Nice. It's an original. Now, not everybody can say that they have one of those hanging on their walls. Ah, oh, that's a pretty epic uh, print. I, 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 really I, I was like, uh, I, you know, the D2 conference, we were number <coughs> 18. We're wondering who was number one. Oh, uh, we can't tell. <laughs> okay, that's a secret. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we are five minutes in. There are 21 people watching. I would say we can start. <coughs> what do you Go say? Go for it. Okay. Hi, Fabio. Hi, Hi Nicolas. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thanks, man. <clears throat> First of all, thank you very much for taking the time. I know that, uh, you know, it's never like an easy decision to do stuff like this because I get it. You know, people are very humble and you're a super humble guy. And talking to you, I really, I cannot understand how humble you can be, you know, with your set of skills <clears throat> and with what you have achieved in your professional life. Uh, so I'm very excited to, to have you on the show. Uh, we talked for a, a relatively long time online. We've interacted and we talked about different things. And this is the very first time that we talk digitally face to face. That's uh, as close as we can get uh, in this new era. But yes. are you coming to Vienna <clears throat> this summer? Yeah, definitely. No, okay, then, miss it. then we'll shake hands and we'll do the whole thing, okay? The whole beers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thing. Beer, it's on us. Hi, Pedro, yeah. welcome. We have Blas also, uh, Aldo Lanzi. Uh, there is a uh, yeah. White Beer Studios renderings. Everybody uh, is watching. Okay, so yeah. basically I asked you to, um, to come on the show because you have a very interesting story to tell. And, you know, I don't want to give anything away. I want you to start, you know, with who you are and tell us a little bit about yourself. And then we get mm -hmm. a little bit into the specific. And I think it's going to be very interesting. Okay. Like, uh, so, yeah, for people that, uh, like, probably nobody knows, but uh, I'm an artist uh, from Argentina. Um, I grew up in Patagonia uh, in, a, in a town there. And... Um, yeah, when it all, this whole thing started more or less when I was uh, 14, I guess, 14 or 15 years old. Uh, my whole family moved to, to Europe. There was a huge crisis in Argentina. It might happen from time to time. You heard it. And um, so we decided to, uh, you know, try uh, spending some time in Spain. And... Um, uh, it was uh, it was uh, an incredible time for me. We we experienced a lot of new things and a new world. And um, when things uh, come down there in Argentina, uh, we we went back. But I always uh, I always had this thing in the back of my mind, like uh, I wanted to go back and uh, uh, try to to develop whatever profession I chose here. So then uh, we went back and I, I uh, kind of um, tried to figure out what was it that I could uh, study in Argentina that allowed me to, to work anywhere. Um, and I chose architecture. I studied architecture in Argentina. Uh, but uh, as I guess it happened to many of the people watching, uh, at some point I realized it was not my thing. So I started <laughs> looking for whatever it was that was my thing I, I didn't I had no idea that what we do existed and uh, I was lucky enough to 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 find it at that point I was uh, 21 and yeah from that point on I started uh, doing images and and spending many many nights uh, working at home and doing personal projects and trying to learn uh, but you know, I didn't yeah. ask you. How old are you actually? I'm 31. I mean, 21. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, <laughs> you said it. I heard it. But you oh. know, you look very young, so uh, it's it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, so uh, I guess uh, one of the first things I learned when I started uh, that time was that uh, I had this small meeting in this uh, new company and uh, we sat down with one of the project managers and we knew nothing, nothing, just how to make boxes and stuff. And they said, okay, if you, if you are going to be in this industry, uh, you might as well know who the best companies are. And the guy just, the first thing he opened was uh, the mirror web. So it was there marked from the very first moment. Like it was always there, like the reference. And uh, that must yeah. have been like uh, stressful. <laughs> I said, I have to get to that point. It, it, it was impossible. It still is. Dude, uh, just before we continue, because I know that mm -hmm. there are uh, uh, people from uh, from the office, from your office watching. Um, oh, did they comment something? Jesus, I don't know. I'm sorry. You know, if there is any Mir guy, uh, give us a sign. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you something and I want to put mm -hmm. you, you know, under a lot of stress and difficulties right now. Who, mm -hmm. who of the people at Mir you like the most? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's who very, do you hate? Funny. Now it's very funny when you when you started the the video that uh, you said uh, that I'm very humble and uh, well when you when you get the opportunity to work with uh, people you admire for so long and you're in the same room with them um, there's no way you cannot be humble you have to learn from these guys and uh, yeah I can you have imagine. to shut up let them do their thing just watch don't do anything just. Just try to get as much as you can from them. I, I remember yeah. I've had like uh, conversations of the kind, you know, uh, in the past when we were like, oh, I just wish I could go one day to the office of Mir, sit down and look at people, you know, working mm -hmm. so that we can kind of steal something out of it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it turns out that if you go to the Mir office, there is Peter doing push-ups in the gym. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There is <laughs> guys yeah, yeah. going, <laughs> guys going around with the with a rope like mad scientists. I think that uh, the I think that the whole ecosystem of Mir is something that needs to be experienced. It's not only like the technique and the stuff that you guys do mm. professionally. I think that there is a lot more, and I, I I really cannot wait, you know, to to have thrown and to ask him all these questions. But, you know, today I want to focus a little bit about mm -hmm. the fact that you had this fantastic journey. You mm -hmm. started with like, you know, doing renderings and then, you know, life kind of took you over to Europe and you ended up in uh, Budapest, right? Yep, yep. Uh, so after, after some years in Argentina, I, I was uh, working for some companies there and um, I was always uh, you know you're always pushing yourself and trying to learn as much as you can um, and um, at, at some point I I got an offer uh, I was always dreaming about uh, different places okay what what would it be like to live in London or Paris I was like uh, it was an amazing dream to have but I, Till that point, it was just a dream. It was like, yeah, one day I would love to work at, at Mir. Yeah, that would never happen. <laughs> but uh, eventually, yeah, I had, uh, I had, a, uh, I applied for a job at uh, Brick Visual, and uh, yeah, I had a couple of interviews with them. And at some point, uh, I was talking to Andras there, and he said, "Okay, so when can you come?" And I was like, I literally said. What? Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure? Do you want to think it again? No, no, no. When can you come? Andras, okay. listen, I appreciate that, but you're about to make a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably he's regretting it now. And uh, yeah, it's a, I can be there in a couple of months. And yeah, that's how it went. And, when when uh, did you start working at uh, Brick? Sorry, when? When? When did you start working at Brick? Oh, I have no idea. Maybe 2014. 
I okay, guess. so that was at the very beginning when Brick was coming up, uh, doing all the cool stuff. They were kind of like the new kids on the block. Yeah, yeah. At, uh, at that point, um, I, I I checked their web and uh, they had what at that time I believe was this kind of mirror style, mm. and uh, their their images were totally out of my league. And uh, I said I can learn so much from these guys, mm -hmm. and I, I did actually. And uh, the the office was so cool, and everyone. That that's something I have to say about the Hungarians. Everyone was so um, they they welcomed me so so well, and I felt so so good there at their office and in Budapest. And uh, I fell in love with that city. It's it's an insane place to live. Yeah, it's true. And you're surrounded by this uh, history, and you know there is architecture everywhere. That's and so. crazy, and yeah, especially the history. And you start to read a bit, or you go around and you see the Romans were here, and then the everyone was there passing by. You have World War One, two, everything. Yeah. It's uh, there's it's so rich in a way. It's but amazing. tell me something. I mean, you must have had a portfolio that was good enough for them to say, "Okay, come and mm -hmm. uh, you know we'll uh, we'll work together." Uh, where did you learn to do the stuff that you learned? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. I don't know about my portfolio. I guess so, uh, because I most of the time, like uh, after a year, I delete all of my images now. So, because uh, I just open some folders and it's so embarrassing. So I don't. I don't keep anything. But um, I, I. I think uh, they must have seen that there was room for development, because uh, that's. It's kind of what. I guess they were looking for not not actually the portfolio, mm. but rather that uh, a person has potential, and uh, it can grow in the structure you built somehow. So, and I, I think they they kind of they they have a good eye for that. Not not talking because of me, but they grew so much over the uh, very little time. Yes, yes. It's it's insane. When I when I got there, I think they were like. 15 mm. or something and I guess now they are about 50. Yeah, I went and to uh, visit them uh, last uh, last uh, fall The office is something like it's so good so beautiful, you know, they have so much space and uh, uh, You know so so much cool tech that you know people can use <laughs> and they <laughs> have this attitude towards you know researching and developing new things uh, which is the key when you work in a in a design company, and I think this is probably the reason why they they became so successful, that they figured out the fact that you know you cannot rely just on what the market is asking, you need to kind of uh, dictate and influence the market, you know, by doing work that then people see and say, okay, we want that kind of work. And hmm. I think they've been pioneering on uh, on that. I I talk to Andras very often. Uh, it's uh, you know it's uh, it's inspiring. Uh, that's all I can say. So you know it's uh, hmm. it's also a blessing in a way to to have the chance to work with them and to to have the chance to to talk to them directly on a daily basis as well. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then after after break, you <coughs> kind of started your own thing, right? Yeah. Yet. Uh at some point, um, I was uh, I was kind of uh, you know you you need to pursue uh, your your own thing in a way. I wasn't I wasn't really sure what it was. It's like uh, I I don't know how I ended up here in a way, but I I knew like I needed to to chase this thing that I had inside of me, like uh, and do my own style of images and. Uh, find my own like uh, niche in a way mm -hmm. and uh, I felt I, ne I needed to expand and uh, and do other things that what I was asked for so and uh, at that point uh, I met um, the other Andras uh, this uh, this other guy which uh, we started uh, anima together and uh, we, we at that point we were Kind of in, in the totally in the same page and synchronized, you know, when you're talking to someone 
and you're he's telling you something you were already thinking we we didn't yeah. even need to talk sometimes so we we were totally on the same page and uh going in one direction and we didn't know what it was we wanted but we it was just happening it was like uh an energy just going forward and uh i said it was a bit crazy at the time to think that I was starting my company in Budapest. It was totally insane for me because I, I still don't speak Hungarian. I can say cheese though, but uh, that doesn't help a lot. I think the learning Hungarian, it's like uh, <clears throat> finding the Easter egg in uh, Ready Player One. I'll it's take so, your word for that. It, it's yeah. really difficult. It's a <laughs> difficult language. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't sound like anything uh, I know. It's, you cannot relate it to, to anything. But, but uh, so yeah. basically, Andra, uh, tell me, uh, which Andras did you meet? Because I, I know a yeah. bunch of Andras. Uh, it's uh, Balog Andras. Ah, okay, yes, yes, mm -hmm. I know who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so, so you were both, you know, you didn't know really what you wanted. You were, let's say, both equally confused. But you knew we, that you were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 knew it kind of. We have had a clue in which direction we wanted to go, more or less, and uh, we we probably knew more of the things that we didn't want to do than the ones we did want to do. It was uh, it was kind of uh, confusing even for us, but somehow the fact that uh, we were connected and synchronized uh, made everything work work. Yeah. So yeah, we we started and um, uh, it went well for a while. Then it went bad, and then it went well. You know, it's like everything. There's good times, bad times. But yeah, it's a it's a great story, and I learned so much there. So much. Uh, it was insane. When you when you say that you learned so much, was it mm -hmm. uh, from a technical point of view? Or did you learn how to talk to clients? Did you learn how to run a business? What was the thing that you think gave you the most from running your own company? Uh, well, the thing with the with having your own business in a way is that you have to develop equally in in every in every aspect mm -hmm. in a way. So you have to you have to be able to get the client to please the client to do the images technically to organize uh, a flow of work uh, to we, we we had kind of uh, different skills mm -hmm. but the thing was that we were doing both of the uh, both of us were doing the images together uh, so that's where we connected and we uh, shared this passion we have for for work so I would say I, I learned from in every aspect of. And where was uh, Andras um, coming from? He's Hungarian. Yeah, yeah, he's but uh, was he working for Brick? How did you? Yeah, meet yeah, him? yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, he was working uh, at Brick there, and um, maybe yeah. Also, there's another guy here that uh, worked at, at Brick at the same time, uh, Chaba from Hungary. Ah, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Very yeah. talented guy. Maybe maybe I should interview him as well. We're cool. we're working on something cool that we it's taking us a little bit of time, but we are going to put it on our D2 conference channel. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, he, he might be interested in in talking to us about this because I think that uh, th the type of work that he does, you know, I'm not trying to to push your work down, but he's very focused. I'm talking about Chaba. Uh, about you know this um, almost paintly 3D you know like I'm talking about the work <laughs> that he did with like Nick inside you know cloned <laughs> uh, there are other works that I remember I saw I was like this is like uh, Renaissance paintings you know it doesn't <laughs> look like uh, renderings yeah my, my my thing with Chava is that uh, till I, till I got to brick I've the, uh, the funny thing is that we started the same day there. Okay. And um, and we got uh, to sit next to each other. And like on our first day, we we were like, hey, we're both new here. Oh yeah, I'm Chaba and uh, from Hungary, and he was the coolest guy ever. 
and we like instantly got along and we were still friends. And when I saw his work, I I realized like uh, it's you can have you can go so much outside this archivist yeah. industry. Like um, it's it's not a, it was not about buildings anymore. The guy had started uh, and and developed art through the years, and I I never had that. So I was so shocked by what he could do, and he could. I, I was totally blown away at that point. I remember. And, uh, he, Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, continue, continue. No, 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 go, go. No, no, I remember, it's funny that you're saying this because I remember I was talking to Alex Ogrefe um, mm -hmm. and, you know, he started his own company uh, together with some, uh, some partners and one of the things that he was telling me is how later in the life of the company they stopped looking for people that could do visualization um, mm. like, you know, purely visualization. They started to look for people that could do visualization, but also art. And they were mm -hmm. much more interested in the art part than in um, in the 3D, because they were like, yeah, you know, 3D, it's easy to learn, but the artistic approach to the image. Um, and that was actually, they thought that for their company, they needed the 3D skills and then they could teach the art. You know, mm. so this is to me very interesting that uh, in the last few years we have had some sort of like an awakening, understanding how important it is to look into different directions and get inspiration from uh, other things in order for us to 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 mm. produce better images. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, but also, there has been uh, kind of a boom in media. And uh, you get now to even to talk to other artists that you admire, like they were there next to you, and uh, and you get to ask them questions, and you get to see what, how did you get to that image that it's totally blowing my mind right now, and it's it's just insane. Uh, maybe I sound a bit old when I say we didn't have this in my times. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, it's yeah. such a fast changing uh, industry that five years, basically, it's a generation, you know? Mm. Yeah. Definitely. If you think about it, I mean, uh, Brick, you know, they went through, they started probably five years ago, if I don't mistake, and they went through, I think, uh, two transformations where they were, you know, the new guys, and then they became like industry standard, you know? Same thing for Mir. Mir, they revolutionized, you know, what was the the uh, market for images by introducing, you know, uh, uh, hyper photorealism and, you know, uh, advanced storytelling. And now they're doing it again, and it seems like it never stops, you know? And I, this is one of the things that I love about them, you know, that every work, <laughs> It's something cool to look at that you say, mm. okay, we haven't seen that before. Mm. Well, the, the the thing with Brick is that um, till till a couple of years ago, I didn't even I thought like every office in this industry was doing images. It's just uh, okay, we're a rendering company and we sell images. But uh, then I learned that, uh, for instance, companies like Brick or Dbox are 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 in a totally different uh, market. They, they they are more about uh, communication and sending a brand, and sorry, selling a brand and developing an image, uh, a company image, and and other things. There's different company profiles depending on what their production is or their targets. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that before either. Yeah, that's but right. Yeah, it's I super mean, interesting. the the industry, a, a, a lot of uh, big <clears throat> players, they're moving into, you know, what uh, is now considered user experience design, you know, UX design. I think that this is a good sign for the industry because of mm -hmm. other things that I'm not going to go into right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is happening, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. and we're seeing a lot of interesting things. Uh, <clears throat> happening. I think it's super, super positive, especially for the 
for the people that work there because uh, it's super, it's diversifying. Yes, and exactly. you get to sit next to people that are in a in a different uh, area, so to say. It you learn from graphic designers or programmers, and you're all in the same room developing the same thing, and uh, that can only be good for you. Of course, of course. Now you find me a hundred percent on board with this. Mm-hmm. I wanna, you know, I wanna ask you. Um, I am of the opinion that if you want to do this kind of job, if you want to work for a big company, if you want to do very cool uh, artistic work, in a way you need to do a little bit of freelancing or you need to try and start your own company. Because I Mm. think that when you do that, you're exposed to things that otherwise (coughs) you would not be exposed if you were to be, say, an artist. Now, in your case, the story is uh, unusual because, you know, you worked for Brick, then you started your own company, and then you Mm -hmm. had the chance to go and work for uh, for Mir. Mm -hmm. So I want you to to talk a little bit about that as well, if it's possible. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, of course, everyone at some point should uh, try to do their own thing. Mostly because it helps you develop aspects that you didn't, maybe you didn't even know were there before. Uh, you have to think differently. It's it's not just about the images anymore, but you have mu- many more variables in a way, and um, you, yeah, you have to to put all the things together in this in this puzzle, and then in the end, you still have to do the image and 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 do the best you can. But of course, there's so many other things that you have to take into consideration that uh, it all kind of synthesizes when you're doing the image itself, because you've been talking to the client, you were pursuing the client before, then you know about how everything goes on out there. And maybe if you're just an artist that works in an office and you don't have that kind of exposure in a way, you, you wouldn't even think about all these uh, uh, new conditions or new factors uh, influencing the, the final output. So, um, yeah, regarding uh, me, it was, uh, it was many, maybe too many variables in a way because I didn't start this company in my own country. I had the brilliant idea of starting it in a country that I didn't know the language, where <laughs> I barely knew anyone. So to a hard thing, I added a, like a lot of extra things to the an explosive cocktail. Um, <laughs> that was uh, yeah, but it made it uh, fun for a while. <laughs> Sometimes it was not, but um, it was uh, super challenging, super challenging to do it so far away from home and. Uh, you you learned that you had tools hidden there somewhere that you didn't know there they were. So um, this is and, almost like we are going borderline motivational, you know. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, it went well, but it could have gone south so many times. <laughs> so it's it's super risky, and uh, I would totally recommend it. But you should be aware that uh, it's it's not an easy thing, and many many people fail. Uh, but then again, I totally think it was worth the the risk and the and taking the chance there. Uh, I mean, look at you! You ended up working for Mir. This is like a dream job. <laughs> it's not like a dream. It's a dream. <laughs> it's a dream. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the, the the first time I was here, I was um, I was still working at the uh, at Brick, and um, I was I was kind of burnt out and needed some holidays, and all I wanted was to sleep, go somewhere to sleep, and I was talking to Chava, and I told him, "Hey, um, how's the weather there?" And he said, "Are you kidding? It's always raining." <laughs> and I said, "Oh, sounds so good for sleeping." It was February in Bergen. It yeah, so. I said, "Do you mind if I go to your to your place and sleep for two weeks?" <laughs> he said, "Yeah, sure, man, no problem." <laughs> oh, sounds like a dream. So I came to Norway and slept <laughs> for two weeks. <laughs> and but one of the days, um, 
he uh, he asked uh, people here if I wouldn't if they would mind if I visited, and uh, yeah, they said of course he can visit. And I remember, yeah, the first time I I visited the office, uh, I greeted the people here, and I, I couldn't even talk. I was shocked. It was insane, and um, it was uh, they they. There was a, a sketch meeting, and I when I when I saw the the, the sketches they were doing, I I was uh, I was totally blown away. I, I couldn't I couldn't believe that people were doing such amazing things, and uh, yet it, it was a really life changing day. And from then on, I, I said like, okay, now I need I know where I need to to go to more or less. That's the way that I, I, I kind of set the direction. But I, I would I had no chance at that point to working here. I was so far away from the level. And um, yeah, but uh, life has these turns, I guess. Yeah, actually, this is the never... title. This is the title of our uh, of our talk. You know, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. uh, it's uh, you know sometimes things happen when you least expect them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, then uh, I yeah, it, it totally changed uh, the way I saw everything. And um, at some point, much much later. Uh, when when I had the the, the option to, to work here, I I remember I I said yes. Of course I said yes, and then I was waking up every day for a week and I said maybe maybe that interview never happened and I dreamt about it. <laughs> that was that really true? And I asked people like, Is this, am I really going to Norway? Yeah, you are. Yeah, uh, it, it was uh, it was insane. How how did that happen? T tell me a little bit. How did you get in touch with the with the guys at Mir, and how did did the, this whole thing happen? Well, yeah. After um, so, I always stayed in touch uh, with Chubby and uh, always asked for his input on my images, which I, I guess was embarrassing at some point. <laughs> I, I guess I sent some awful stuff, and but he was always super nice and. Um, and I asked him, like, without compromising uh, his uh, what he could say in a way. Like, I asked him for feedback and for how could I improve. And um, at at some point, I, I got uh, kind of a. I felt I wasn't really developing as much as I wanted. I felt like. Uh, in order to grow as a as an artist, uh, the I, I needed something different. I was I was kind of uh, kind of stuck, and uh, I told him this and uh, that I, I didn't feel well, I didn't feel comfortable, and um, and yeah, I guess at, at some point they, they saw my work, and they they were interested, and yeah, that the rest is. Just uh, the regular, uh, I guess, story. But you know, you keep saying <clears> to <throat> me that your work was not good enough. It was not good enough. I mean, I remember mm. looking at your work, and your work mm. was was good enough. Come on, there must have been something like that you have done right. Because I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, on mm. uh, on my end, I get about ten portfolios every day of people looking for <laughs> feedback. Mm -hmm. And the truth that matter is that most of the people, not all of them, most of the people, uh, although technically they can produce very good images, there is always like the feeling of something that it's missing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I've had this feeling about my work my entire <laughs> career. I learned everything by myself. Then I've had the chance to work uh, together with uh, Stefan Laub, the uh, the owner of V-Ray for C4D, he gave me a lot of knowledge and my technical knowledge went up. And of course, you know, the uh, the technical aspect of the images that we were making went up. But still, there was a little bit something that was missing from the, the work that I was making. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, I was not happy. But very often I see this lack of that extra quality 
into the work of a lot of people. And then yeah. you see the work of, say, Thomas Dubois or, uh, you know, on top of my head, uh, maybe uh, Tamash, you know. Mm -hmm. And you think, okay, this is an outstanding piece of art, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's not about the, the, the archivists, it's not about the storytelling, it's, a, it's about the whole complexity of the artwork. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's... Um, and, and I think that very often one of the biggest issues is that the people that are looking for that kind of feedback, um, they will never be able to get it because you, you simply cannot explain it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I remember I went to a workshop of Thomas Dubois, he was invited by us, and I listened to the whole thing. And, you know, in the process of creating images, he was like, and then you do this, and... I don't know why it looks good, <laughs> so it's okay. You just you just put a stroke here, and that's it, and it's the perfect stroke. But yeah, but how did you come up with that stroke? You just put it there. You, you uh, know, and that's the things you cannot teach. But then, how do you learn them? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, when you when you, when I when I talk about my work uh, before before coming here. Um, I thought, you know, there's, if you would say, okay, this is me and I know I need to get here and I would be fully developed as an artist. I believe that there was like an end to, to be the best you can be, uh, that, uh, it's, you say like, okay, I need like three years of training to get here and then I can do anything I want. But when you, when you see this, uh, these people, like, there's, uh, there's, there's not, there's no way you can, uh, you can be fully developed ever. There's, uh, and there's, it's so hard to, to teach someone what they are missing in a way. You cannot, because there's this artists that have all this formation in arts and, or, I don't know photography or something complementing their their uh, 3D work. That makes the everything so much uh, richer in a way. That uh, there's there's no hours of Photoshop or or training, electronic training or master class that it's gonna that it's gonna improve that. So there's. You have to be humble. You have to, again, shut up. Learn from these people all you can. Look, um, try to to see wh where they are going with their, like th their line of progress, to say it. And uh, you just uh, yeah. There's there's no uh, recipe actually. Now, uh, hold on. I want to interrupt you because there was an aspect. Uh, <coughs> um, about you know something from from this uh, uh, talk that I wanted to ask you, and then I mm. kind of found out that you know I was a little bit disappointed because I wanted to know how you managed to get uh, say. Uh, oh, with, I see where you're going <laughs> with all the papers, you know. <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah, actually, you know, I have an Italian passport, and I'm like, ah, oh, god damn it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, we. I come from uh, an Italian family, and um, as you might know, uh, you can um, you can pass your citizenship onto your children. Uh, but I look Italian, don't I? Uh, so just like Robert De Niro. I don't know. Do we look alike? <laughs> uh, yeah. Then you look Italian. Luckily for you. <laughs> Hold on, before we continue, because I realized we've been talking for like 44 minutes and we have asked no questions. First of all, I want to say hi to everybody who tuned in. I see we have the French monkey, which I've, I've, I've already interviewed a couple of days ago. We have Nuno, uh, Khaled, Francisco, Tiabut, I think it's your name, Pedro, what's happening, man? Um... I kind of want to ask you if you have any questions uh, specifically, you know, for uh, Nicholas. Uh, don't ask me anything. <laughs> Christopher, hi. Uh, just, you know, ask now and I'll try to keep an eye on the chat and then mm -hmm. ask, you know, uh, Nicholas if, if, uh, if, 
you know, if uh, if some questions come up. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, I wanted to ask you, you know, because one of the things that I get asked all the time is, how do you get, um, how do you get the possibility of being sponsored by a company f if you are from another country to kind of go and work for them? And I know mm -hmm. I'm asking you this because you know you come from very far. Um, you, we already discussed this topic, so I want you mm -hmm. to to share your vision as well with uh, with the uh, I Irinel. So yeah, go yeah, ahead. of course uh, I I understand. Um, well, if you manage to fulfill the requirements that the company you're targeting is looking for, um, I'm pretty sure many companies in Europe would sponsor people that have the potential to grow or that have an amazing portfolio. Uh, sometimes it's hard, I, I know, because uh, I, I saw some people that uh, couldn't, couldn't manage to, to get visas here. But uh, I know for a fact that uh, there are people from South America working in Europe, and I, I, I guess their portfolio was good enough so that companies would sponsor them. But then again, uh, I, I saw this interview you had the other day that uh, someone was saying something like, okay, what, how do you get to work in one of these companies? Like, what do you need to have? And uh, you have to, to be able to, it's it, to fulfill, like, um, to get the identity of the company you're targeting. You need to, if you want to work for, I don't say, I don't know, Brick Visual, for instance, you have to open their web, see what their work is, is all about, find their identity, and then go to your portfolio and be critical and see, okay, am I close to this? Am I in, in the right direction? If I grow, am I going to go in that way? Am I am I able to be a, an artist in whatever company I want to work in, in, let's say, three years? And if the answer is yes, if you know or if you think you can do it, then I'm pretty sure companies would sponsor that. So, yeah, it's not a crazy thing. It, it does happen. I want to I wanna add a little bit to this. Um, mm -hmm. I think that in a way it is more beneficial for people looking for a job to really focus on the, uh, on the company that they want to be part of because they have a higher mm -hmm. chance to actually score a job at a company where they really want to work. Mm -hmm. And eventually in the in the pursuit of getting a job in the company where they really want to work, they can build a portfolio that other companies might discover and say, okay, you're good enough to work for us. Mm -hmm. And still, even when you get that job, you should keep the focus of saying, yeah, but my dream is still to work for them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course I understand it. And uh, you have to be super, again, super critical and uh, is it objective in, in a way that uh, when you open your portfolio, when you get a portfolio and you see it, it's not just a collage of images you did. You have to, in a way, be able to read a, a, a profile or like uh, a style. And that style has to be coherent with the company you're applying for. Because uh, that's what I guess companies are interested in, in a way. Dude, there are some so, questions coming in. You want uh, me to, to read them? Yeah. Okay, please. so Tamash asks, Nico, what are you doing in your free time besides sleeping? Ha ha ha. I know. <laughs> I knew someone would ask this. <laughs> now, um,. Uh, I don't know, in, when there's nice weather outside, <clears throat> uh, I like... Uh, <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, it was, uh, yeah, it was a tricky answer. Uh, I, I, like, uh, I like walking outside a lot, and for instance, when I was in Budapest, I, I, after every day, I took an hour-long walk and listened to music, but uh, here I like to do a lot of gaming, I do some heavy gaming. And, um, which game? Which game? <laughs> Are you on Battlefield? Uh, on what? Battlefield? Oh, uh, no, I was. I, I played Counter-Strike and Simulators. Okay. Yeah. 
we have another question as well. Yeah, if yeah. if you're ready to take it. Yeah, so sure. We have Lautaro Fogel. Yep. He's asking most importantly, what's that weird thing Nico is drinking, and is what is that what gives him special visualization skills? Yeah, this. Uh, I'm not this sure is... if you're drinking something or you're smoking a pipe. No, no, this is a uh, mate from Argentina. Okay. This is a tea, an infusion. Uh, yeah, I'm drinking this all day long. It's, it's funny because people from Brazil, they say that this is from Brazil. No way. There's no way. That's true. <laughs> That's from Argentina. Yeah, we know that there is no nice weather <laughs> outside. But guys, please contribute to the discussion. Tamash, you are a world famous artist. It's not possible that you ask a question such as, you know, what Nico is doing besides sleeping. Come on. It's really mean because he actually, <laughs> he actually knows. Try harder. Try harder. Yeah. I see a lot of people. Uh, we have had quite a bit of uh, guys uh, coming in and out from the, from the live stream. So, you know, guys, this is your chance to ask a question to somebody that is working at a company like Mir. So don't be shy and just go for it. No. Okay. We we will get there. Listen, yeah. I want to I want to ask you um kind of a personal question, uh, you know, maybe you're going to be like, "Ah, oh, come on." But, you know, you're good. Come on. You're a good artist. What do you think it is uh the thing that you have more than other artists that you would recommend other artists to also spend time and develop in order to go a little bit further in their career. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally get the question. No, it's really, it's really hard to, to give this kind of advice. And uh, uh, I, this is just what worked for me. This is totally personal. Maybe it's not the same for everyone. Probably, um, what what I did a lot was uh, spend. I was working always till like five or six p.m., and then I just went home for years, and I spent nights and nights and nights trying stuff, just uh, rendering, uh, trying new light setups, trying uh, new looking at new artists, trying to see what they were doing, how to copy, how to how to improve. And the only way to get better for me was just to do and do and do and work and work. I don't, I don't, it's very little people that are natural artists and then can just sit down and make an awesome image. Uh, I, I don't know a lot of those. But I know a lot of people, like for instance, Tommy, I know he he works really hard, and he does a lot of images, and he he spends a lot of time uh, improving and trying new things. And I think uh, it's ninety nine percent hard working. The only way to to get better. That's uh, that's my advice. At least just sit down and work. Exactly. There's no, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so we have a couple of questions. One, I think you can answer very quickly. Do they speak English or Norwegian in the studio? Uh, everyone speaks English. Uh, that's a very cool thing about uh, Norway. Everyone here speaks English. And uh, whenever you're around uh, the Norwegians, they automatically switch. They have a, a boundary zone. And when you cross the line, they, they switch to English. It's amazing. <laughs> uh. Well, uh, do they drink at Mir? I guess they do. Drink what? I guess, you know, uh, do they do they drink like... Yeah, oh, like beer and stuff. Yeah, I guess that uh, alcohol is part of a diet of a normal artist. I don't know. I don't think so. No? <laughs> no? Maybe, on a, maybe on a party or something. Okay, okay. Yeah, in uh, case they are... Yeah. I have some more questions. Uh, what is the most uh, difficult aspect of your job? Uh, okay, I'm <clears throat> I'm just gonna leave it open as a question because I don't want to bias him. So, what is mm -hmm. the most difficult aspect of your job? Oh, uh, well, when 
maybe maybe many people know about uh, the the workflow here but uh, at the at the beginning of a project we do a lot of uh, sketches it's uh, some tiny tiny images to see an idea behind that image so at that point the execution of the image is it's not really important but rather the concept behind the image has to really be there and you have to kind of make it work and uh, that's that's super challenging for me. Uh, the, this this sketching part, it's uh, it's super hard. Um, I'm trying to get good at it and improve as much as I can, but I, I would say that's the the hardest part, the sketching. Okay, and then the rest. It's uh, <clears throat> I'm I'm gonna say this because the question was, what is the most uh, difficult um, part working with clients, knowing what to charge, work life balance. I think that uh, Mir takes care of, uh, you know, talking to clients, um, knowing what to charge, whilst the work-life balance, basically, you guys don't, uh, usually don't do overtimes, right? It's pretty standard, you don't work on weekends, it's relatively flexible, right? Yeah, I would say, I would say in most cases we don't uh, uh, do a lot of overtime. <laughs> Like I, I hear people work. Some people work twenty hours a day or something. That's insane. Aldo, sorry, I misunderstood the question. <laughs> Basically, he was asking, "Drink mate," uh, and I read "mate." It was mate. Okay, so it's a, uh, it's a traditional <laughs> oh, drink of Uruguay and Argentina. He says. Okay, we'll we'll uh, we'll. <laughs> make a compromise there and say yeah. okay maybe you're away too we will google it you cannot escape google um Irina is asking do you have any areas in which you want to improve in 3d also hold on there is a question from christopher corazza what is the typical process of building an image and mirror maybe you want to finish that because you already started you know we're talking mm -hmm. about uh, the little 800 pixel sketches Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, I, I think those are online, those those talks. I think uh, there's a couple of lectures from Tron out there and or people explain more or less how, how it is. I can quickly say that, uh, yeah, there's a, a sketching part in, in which you kind of try to build an idea for an image. And uh, it's small. It doesn't have to be super precise. But there has to be some some... Uh, juice behind that, you know, some something going on, and uh, when you're happy with the with the sketching and the client likes the sketches, you just uh, build them in high res, and that's when all the shading and 3D Max skills uh, come in handy. Uh, or, or Lightwave. Yeah, if you're if you're part of the Lightwave uh, gang, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, there's a kind of a, a battle in office with between Lightwave and Max. Yeah. So areas of 3Ds where you personally would like to improve? <clears throat> no, it's a. Uh, it's not really in 3D, but when I when I go to the web and I see other artists that are so good in in the artistic part of the images, like or painters or whatever it is that they are doing outside of the 3D business. Uh, that's where I want to get better. I think that's uh, that's in a way what the, the future of, the, of our job is about because uh, it's getting easier and easier to get a render out of the, the frame buffer. Yes. But if you don't, if you don't know what to put in there, what to feed the computer, uh, if you don't know how to make the colors work or a composition, then there's no program that can save you. AI. Hopefully not. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Ooh, I have no idea because if because if I look backwards, probably and sleeping. I look, bro, was that Tommy again? No, no, no. <laughs> I don't know if I look backwards and I see all the things that happened in this 10 years I couldn't be so arrogant as to project myself and say, oh, I'm gonna be in this office sitting in this kind of chair I have no idea what's gonna happen I have no idea 
hopefully I'm going to be doing the same thing and uh, get better, I guess. But, you know, it's uh, the next 10 years are going to be just as unexpected as these first 10 years of, mm. of your career. So, yeah, hope I stay slim. <laughs> Is that... That's all I hope. Are, are you saying that to me? <laughs> but I hope we stay slim. I mean, man, the amount of work and, you know, this chair, when I sit on that chair, mm -hmm. gravity raises and I cannot get up. It's the famous gravity chair. Yeah, the gravity chair. Uh, dude, listen, we are one hour in. I know that, you know, it's uh, Friday night and you got to go home. Uh, <laughs> I need to go to a party. My wife is going to kill me. So I'm just going to wrap it up for now. I want to thank go everybody for, for, uh, for coming in. Uh, you know, and chat with us. I want to thank you for for doing this. I, it's really an honor, and I'm humbled by how nice and how kind you are. And I I really hope that you know people are going to enjoy uh, this this uh, this talk as much as I did making it with you, uh, dude. Thank you very much. I really uh, appreciate it. It was it was my pleasure. I hope uh, someone out there finds it uh, useful and. Uh, and I'm looking forward to see you in Vienna. It was my pleasure to be on your uh, show. Guys, in, yeah. uh, I'm going to stop the, 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 um, the stream for now. I'll see you in Vienna. Thanks a bye lot bye. for watching. Bye. Bye.